So I was just kind of introducing you. This is our awesome attorney here, Richard Drucker. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about criminal records and what that has to do with immigration. Our first question here is, if I have been convicted of a crime in my country, can I obtain a visa or a green card for the United States? Uh, that's actually an extremely good question. It really doesn't matter if you've been convicted in the United States or in your home country. Uh, so it, it matters more what crime did you commit. Uh, if it's a, a crime that is a petty offense, or if it's a crime that uh, is not a crime involving moral turpitude, then it may not impede your abil ability to get a visa to come into the United States. However, if it's a serious crime, a felony, uh, a crime that involved more than one year in prison, a crime that involved uh, uh, drugs or weapons or sex offenses uh, or crimes of violence, then uh, you may not be able to get a visa to come into the United States. If I have been convicted of a crime in the United States, can I still get a green card? Again, very similar to the answer to the last question. It depends on the crime that you've allegedly committed. Okay. Petty offenses generally uh, will not be a... Uh, barrier to getting a green card. You, you can still get a, a green card. Uh, if there's multiple offenses, they could be a major problem. The, the offenses that you have to worry about, the criminal offenses, are, this, are the felonies. They call aggravated felonies. And again, those are generally crimes that involve uh, possession or sale of drugs, mm -hmm. uh, burglary, robbery, mm -hmm. uh, felonious assault, uh, murder, rape, any type of sexual battery offense, uh, conspiracies, any crime generally that results in a, a prison sentence of greater than one year uh, will, will prohibit you from getting a green card. What criminal convictions or circumstances could lead me to being placed in uh, immigration proceedings, or even being deported? Okay. It's a very good question. Okay. So I'm going to talk about all the ways that you can be put in deportation proceedings. The first thing is if you come to this country, if you enter this country, and you're convicted of a crime involving moral turpitude within the first five years of your admission, then you may be removable from the United States. That okay. means you may be placed in deportation proceedings. Okay. Okay. Uh, the second circumstance would be if you're a green card holder mm -hmm. and you're convicted of two crimes involving moral turpitude, mm -hmm. then you could be placed in deportation proceedings. So what are crimes involving moral turpitude? Mm -hmm. Those are generally uh, misdemeanors, uh, most misdemeanors, or felonies that involve uh, sentences that are less than one year in prison. Okay. So those are generally crimes involved, very general definition. So okay. if you if you get your green card, mm -hmm. and uh, after a five-year period, if you're within a five-year period, if you're convicted of one crime involving moral turpitude, mm -hmm. you can be put in deportation proceedings. After that five-year period, if you commit two crimes involving mm -hmm. moral turpitude, you could be put in deportation proceedings. Okay. Uh, the other way of being being put in deportation proceedings if you commit one aggravated felony. Okay. And uh, so an aggravated felony, is, as I've described earlier, is crimes of violence, mm -hmm. sex offenses, drug offenses, weapons offenses, uh, things of that, that nature, mm -hmm. and felonies where you are sentenced to prison for a period of time more than one year. Okay. So... Um, those are, those are the general grounds that you can be placed in removal proceedings. Okay. Um, obviously, there's a lot of nuances that uh, follow from that. Okay. So. 
So now a very, very good question that we have here. It's something very common that we see and it's regarding DUIs and well, drunk driving. So how would having a drunk driving conviction impact my ability to become a legal permanent resident or a US citizen? Very good question. So in terms of applying for and receiving a green card, a OVI conviction is not considered a criminal conviction. It's a driving offense. So it would not impact or should not impact your ability to become a legal permanent resident. Okay. Um, now, that doesn't mean that um, you should go out and get 100 OVI <laughs> yeah. uh, charges. I mean, obviously, there is some point where if you're continually getting in trouble, it could become a problem because at least in the state of Ohio, if you get your fourth OBI is a felony offense. So mm -hmm. there you you actually may be getting into the realm of criminal versus the realm of traffic. But theoretically, um, uh, an OVI or two should not impact your ability to uh, get a green card. Mm -hmm. Now, in regard to becoming a citizen, there's an issue that's involved a very important issue in getting a citizen, getting your citizenship, is that you have to show that you're a good moral character. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. government in naturalization applications have been taking the position that if you are driving drunk, you're not a person of good moral character. And in fact, um, uh, they have been not denying uh, naturalization applications based upon OVI convictions. Now, what I've seen is that if you get an OVI and then you shortly thereafter apply for your naturalization, they will deny the application, but they may also indicate that after some period of time lapses, you could reapply if you could demonstrate that you're rehabilitated and have some lengthy period of sobriety, you may, in fact, get your uh, citizenship. But... Uh, overall, uh, OVIs are looked at as being a bad fact in uh, determining whether you're a person of good moral character and has led to denial of naturalization applications. Right. But this, uh, this leads into another very important issue. Um, the government grants people green cards, which in essence gives people the right to live here but that right is based upon good behavior. So obviously, if you come to this country and you get your green card, you become a permanent resident, you have to remember that it's conditioned upon your good behavior. And any type of um, bad behavior can lead to loss of your green card. Um, and certainly uh, committing crimes is uh, bad behavior. And the worse the crime, the less likely chance that you have of keeping your green card. And the government actually, over the years, 38 years, I've been practicing criminal law and immigration law. The, the laws are becoming stricter and stricter, uh, making it easier to, for people to lose their green card based on criminal activity. Is there a way to have a crime removed from my record? Most states have a process by where you can expunge your record, which means seal not only the court, all court records of your conviction, mm -hmm. but also have all the records by all law enforcement agencies sealed. That would include uh, in Ohio, the Bureau of Criminal Investigation. Mm -hmm. It could be the, the police department's records where they arrested you, and the courts even ordered the federal government to seal their record of, of your arrest or conviction. Okay. Called expungement or sealing of the records. And in Ohio, uh, they recently passed a statute that allows you to seal up to four records. Now, there's some, the, generally the records that can be sealed are crimes that are of moral turpitude but are not the aggravated felony type of mm -hmm. crime, so like uh, sex crimes, crimes of violence, uh, weapons charges, uh, you know, uh, generally f sex crimes and violent crimes are the ones that can't be expunged. Yeah. Okay. 
And um, so for immigration purposes, however, even if you expunge or seal your record, mm -hmm. that does not count for immigration purposes. So okay. if you've been convicted of a crime that could, an aggravated felony that could lead to your removal, mm -hmm. uh, expunging that record won't help. The government could still, uh, in essence, deport you. I uh, want to talk about one other issue uh, mm -hmm. here. A lot of states and courts have first offender programs. Okay. And what happens in those cases is an individual pleads uh, guilty, but there's no finding of guilt. The court doesn't make a finding of guilt, so there's no conviction of record in that court. Mm -hmm. And the court will put you on probation in those cases, and then ultimately the case will be dismissed. If you, if you remain on good behavior. Uh, for the purposes of immigration, first of diversion or first offender programs mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. still count for removal, deportation purposes. Okay. Unless you don't enter a guilty plea. If you're placed in a, a program that results in a dismissal of the case mm -hmm. where you don't enter a guilty plea, but the case and the case is ultimately dismissed. Mm -hmm. Generally, those crimes will not count for deportation. Okay. But in cases where you admit to guilt, but you're placed in a diversion program, mm -hmm. those um, those convictions do count. So I, I don't know how clear I was, but uh, certainly if anybody has any questions out there, there feel free to call me and I'll I'll be I'll explain more uh, succinctly. Thank you for watching our video here with attorney Margaret Wong. My name is Stephanie Ayala. We hope you enjoyed today's topic. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave any questions or comments down below that we can potentially use for future videos. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For more information about our law firm, check out our website at imwong.com and feel free to schedule a consultation at 216-566-9908. Thank you.